You guys, I wish that thumbnail was clickbait, but it ain't. I might have messed up my motor bad. And so here I'm at my Bonanza Mechanics to beg for some help. Pride be damned, I need some help. There's a, a hex nut in the Continental IO 340 engine that is known to be a bit of a bitch to get out. I was prepared for this to be a problem, but it's a bigger problem than I thought. Let me try to get some help. And we'll show you what I'm talking about. Well, they're pretty busy, but they did give me another set of extractor tools that uh, hopefully do the trick. Talked it over with them. If I can't get it, then uh, maybe this afternoon or next week they can help me out. So this has me on edge, you can tell. Hey, it's Steve. Welcome back to Clear Direct. We got a lot of interest on in this uh, Class Star Sportsman. It's my hangar neighbors. He's renting some space while my hangar is being completed. Uh, he hasn't even flown it yet, and I don't want to delve too much into this beautiful airplane without his permission until he flies it a little bit. So we're just going to leave it there. So I promise I'll update you guys on this beautiful airplane. Sorry to interrupt. There is a Glass Star that is available. Um, I don't know much about it. It's a kit, it's been sitting here for a while. Somebody is trying to sell it. Uh, the way you find out more is EAA chapter 1345, the local EAA chapter here in Bend. Um, I don't know even know if this wing is for it, but it's beautiful and it is available. So if wants to pick up a kit, uh, reach out to EAA chapter 1345. Okay, back to the video. This is my airplane, a Rans S21. If you're new to the channel, I'm putting in a Continental IO 340, which is really a light combing, bored out 320, uh, injected electronic ignition. And let's talk about the issue. So thanks to other YouTubers, specifically S21 Project, for being so thorough and talking about his difficulties removing these bolts. And I will mention that I, I reached out both to Continental and uh, to RANS. And Randy of Rand's Aircraft, um, he did acknowledge that they have had issues with these bolts too, and they're a very soft metal. And, and the new president of Rand's, Tony, he said that they've that Continental has upgraded to harder bolts, which is absolutely necessary because everybody is using an Allen wrench and stripping it. And that's what I did. It's a 3 16ths Allen bolt, if you will. And it's similar to this one. And I think this is a backup based upon engine mounts and magneto locations, you have the option of using this one as well. I don't know that for sure yet, that's just a hunch. But everybody is using this one, right? It's just easier access, um, we don't have magnetos. And I needed to pull that out for a port for oil pressure, okay? There's a similar bolt that I was successful in removing. It's right here. This is for manifold pressure. There's an identical one on the opposite side of the engine for pushers. Let me show you what it looked like before I got it out. Okay, it's right there. So paint doesn't help, right? Paint probably just adds to, you know, the difficulty of getting a, a tool in there, clean metal to metal contact. So how I got this one out successfully was, thanks to again, S21 project for the heads up on that. Um, I didn't even start with an Allen wrench. You can tell I, I haven't even been able to get the torques out of this. I haven't tried very hard, but this is the actual Allen bolt, if even you call it a bolt. But the Torx is a T30 Torx. I kind of tapped it in there gently and then put slow even pressure after heating it up and, it's, and it eventually came loose, okay? So what actually happened here is I started with the Allen wrench, which was a fatal error. Don't do that. Um, should have started with a Torx 30. After I stripped it a little bit, the Torx 30 uh, then did not work. Yes, I heated it up. The other thing Randy said to try was penetrating oil. So uh, we've got some of that right here. I'm going to put this on a Q-tip and just, I didn't want the spray because I didn't want it all around here. I just wanted to uh, be accurate in where I put it. So I'm going to put it around the edge, let that sit for a bit, let it penetrate in and try to loosen it up. Let me back up. The next thing I did was I tried my mechanics extractor set yesterday, okay, to no avail. So I think I started with this one and then eventually drilled it out a little bit to uh, one quarter and tried that and it's not working. And the reason it's not working is because those things love to penetrate as much as it can uh, to get as much 
you know, contact with the, the bolt. And I am very hesitant for obvious reasons to drill all the way through, if it's not obvious, is I don't want to introduce metal shavings inside of the case. Okay, so, so the way I see it, I have two options. And I propose both of these options to my rep at Continental Motors, and I'm waiting to hear back from him. One option is I do, I, I just drill through, or I'll try again without drilling anymore. Um, but drill through, and what my mechanic said is, is if you do, just do a little bit at a time, clean out the shavings, put a little grease on the tip of the bit, and just go a little bit at a time. So once that punches through, hopefully that grease is capturing most of those shavings. But once it's through, then one of those extractors uh, should work no problem. Um, the other option is punt, is give up on this bolt and just use that alternative bolt I was talking about. My reluctance to do that is A, what if that doesn't work? What if that strips? B, I'm forever gonna worry about this bolt here being potentially structurally compromised, right? What if it gives out and now oil is, is blasting towards the firewall? So that's the dilemma. Uh, again, this is a $40,000 engine plus. It's probably more than that. I paid just under that, but that was like two and a half years ago. This is the part of experimental aviation that, uh, that I guess the only drawback that I can see is it, it kind of drives me crazy. I'm not an engine guy and here I am working on an engine for the first time on a $40,000 engine on an airplane. So for what it's worth, uh, everything has been relatively easy so far. This is my only hiccup, or my first hiccup with the engine. It's by far the most frustrating day of the entire build. And we're gonna get through it. We're gonna have resolution. I just don't know yet. So hopefully at the end of this video, you're gonna see a smiling Steve rather than a to be continued. But what am I gonna do right now? Oh, there's another ere um, erector set, uh, extractor set that uh, my mechanic just gave me. And it looks like this. It's a bit of a different style. It has a little bit sharper, which I'm a fan of, a sharper um, nose to the bit. And hopefully um, that will, will work without having to drill out the entire uh, bolt. So I'm not exactly sure how this works quite yet. I think it is reverse threaded. So he said something about putting it on the end of a drill and then in, you know, dialing it off of the drill setting and engage that clutch so that it steps and it gives little little nudges. The root cause is just too soft of a metal. I mean, it's like, I don't know what it is, but it feels like just soft iron. I'm gonna put the camera down and, uh, and see if we can't figure this out um, before um, drilling the whole thing out. And I'm still, I'm gonna be checking my email and uh, maybe making a phone call to Continental to see if I could get um, better guidance on this. Wish me luck. I have an idea. I unscrewed the extractor portion from the bit head this just unscrews out and this to me looks good it's blunt enough it's not as long as say one of these previous extractors stop looking at my popcorn i think i'm going to try just this without the bit on the end of it because the bit on the end of it risks punching through the back of the bolt so that's going to be i think step one i'm going to try this one I've let the extraction oil set for a while. I'm gonna heat it up again and then try using this. Purchase feels pretty good. Okay, that's in there. And it's grabbing. That's a good sign. Uh, something moved. I don't know if it. I think we might have it. It's rotating. It's rotating. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. 
Oh! Uh, oh, we got it. Oh my God. I got no sleep last night. <laughs> Thank you, Steve and Bobby. This little guy saved the day. So, once again, the answer it was for me using this new extraction set power extractors so they have that bit so here's a, a larger size one completed uh, which would be good if i could drill through and deeper into the bolt but again i didn't want to drill through this nut and introduce shavings into the case so i just unscrewed it it's threaded all the way down and just used this portion of it oh my god i am gonna put the camera down i'm going to put fittings for oil, uh, there might be some shavings. I'm gonna clean that out real well and then put the fitting in, put the fitting in for uh, manifold pressure and then it's hang time. Oh, you know what the other problem is? Oh my God, as if we needed more drama to this episode. So take a look at this oil filter and look how far back it sits from the engine mount. So the engine mount is here. It sits good seven inches aft of the engine mount. And I haven't seen anybody else use the vertical power system in a Rans SV1, and specifically the, the PPS, the, the primary power system, which replaces the solenoids. Well, I chose to locate it right there. And you can tell that it's probably gonna interfere with the oil filter. So you can see I've also located the sensor manifold Right here, this is not part of the kit. You get this from Stein Air. I'm gonna have manifold pressure here, oil pressure and fuel pressure. And then the red cube, you'll notice that's not located on here. The red cube, there is a specific bracket for this engine. Steve and Tom at Aircraft Specialty uh, have uh, a really good thing going where you can mount your red cube and really minimize the hoses you have because you, you mount it literally like right up up here against the spider. Anyway, sorry for the drama. I promise the next episodes will be a lot more fun. We're an RCH from getting 10,000 subscribers where I'm gonna have some cool t-shirts to celebrate that milestone. So anyway, I sure appreciate you. Till next time, it's Steve, your clear direct. If you have sensitive ears, earmuffs. I got it. Got you, mother G-rated. I'm sorry. Not really. Hey!